Flying to space for a second time is Crew 11 mission specialist and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Himiya Yui. The 55 year old is making his return to the International Space Station after his first trip almost exactly a decade ago. The Japanese astronaut found his way to space by way of becoming a pilot. Yui got his start here in the United States. I had like a T 38 training mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, uh, Columbus, Mississippi. And during the weekend, I went to the actually uh, like a rental video shop. At the time, we had a lot of rental video shop, and uh, saw a video named like a right stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that time, at that point, uh, I thought in Japan probably uh, for the fighter pilot, it's very difficult to become an astronaut. But uh, now I knew that I mean in history, United States state history. Test, military test pilot to become an astronaut. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, might be this, this might be a best way to become an uh, astronaut in Japan. So I have decided to become a um, fighter pilot, then test pilot. Then, luckily, I was selected <laughs> as an astronaut in 19, uh, 2009. Yui was actually the first military pilot to be selected as an astronaut in Japan. He was part of the international mission specialists selected to train with NASA astronauts as part of Group 20 which was given the nickname the Chumps. Along with the other astronaut candidates, or ASCANs, selected in 2009, was fellow JAXA selectee Takuya Unishi. As luck would have it, the two will get the chance to reunite in space once Crew 11 docks with the International Space Station. This is really rare occasion. Uh, in the past, we also had some like uh, two Japanese astronauts on orbit uh, in the same time. But this is the first time, actually, same ASEAN candidates, uh, as ASEANs, actually, together in orbit, same uh, graduates. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only work, but we have very good relationship, playing golf with him, or eating dinner, lunch. And also his background was, was pilot. So pretty similar, actually, mindset and operational skills. He's a little bit younger, yeah, but I feel like <laughs> Almost the same age, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Did, did you feel some uh, competitiveness with him being in the same astronaut class? Oh, initially, yes, but now we are very good friends, so as I actually supporting each other, yeah. And of course, good rival, but good friends, so very good relationship. As part of his astronaut training, Yui was selected to participate in one of NASA's underwater training expeditions. The 16th NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations, or NEMO, took place back in June of 2012. Yeah, that was very interesting experiments, uh, experience. That's like a closed environment is pretty similar for the space. Outside of that capsule, yeah, mm -hmm. we cannot really live without like a space suit or like, a, uh, like a, some special device to breathe. And because of the pressure, NEMO mission, once we pressurize, we cannot easily go up to the surface. From that experience, I've learned a lot of actually a mindset uh, in small volume with teams, or maybe how to actually do some operations by using like a procedures, like a new technologies, etc. So that was very good experience for me. Yui served as the backup astronaut for the European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Christopher Reddy on Expedition 42-43. After the launch of Soyuz TMA-15M in November 2014, Yui was able to focus on his own mission as a prime crew member of Expedition 44-45. He trained alongside Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko and NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren. We have liftoff. The trio launched aboard the Soyuz TMA-17M spacecraft on July 22, 2015 to begin their long-duration mission on the International Space Station. During that six-month stint, Yui was able to operate the station's robotic arm to berth an HTV, the H-2 transfer vehicle, which was JAXA's cargo spacecraft. Notably, this was the first time that a Japanese astronaut was able to attempt to capture a Japanese cargo ship. That's actually a great honor, actually, at the time for me to capture HTV as a, a first astronaut, JAXA astronaut, to capture HTV. A lot of pressure uh, at the time uh, because of the multiple cargo vehicle failure, actually kind of low in inventory you know, at uh, ISS at the time. 
The cargo vehicle failures we referenced included the in-flight explosion of Orbital Sciences ORB3 or Cygnus 3 mission in October 2014. A uh, rather significant spinning, rotational spinning motion. An issue with a Russian Progress vehicle prevented its docking with the International Space Station in April 2015. Vehicle on course, on track and the in-flight explosion during SpaceX's Sierra 7 mission in June 2015. All of this put extra pressure on Yui and Lindgren as they worked to snag the HTV. All happy faces down here. The mission was super successful, and I was uh, able to capture very successfully and smoothly. Yui has a chance to make history once again. During the fall, JAXA aims to launch its latest cargo vehicle, the HTV-X. Yui says he's looking forward to being the first astronaut ever to help birth this new vehicle to the ISS. So that's a great honor and looking forward to it. And have you been working with the HTVX team on, you know, working with that spacecraft once it's docked on orbit, the, the process of packing and unpacking it? Yeah, actually we start uh, discussing about that as well. And you know, honestly speaking, I was involved in like a development phase as well. Mm. So I did some uh, CIT, like uh, internal test. Uh, for that specific vehicle uh, in Japan. Uh, at the time, I never thought about uh, I'm actually <laughs> real, uh, real time actually inter entering this space. I just doing that test for the another astronaut. Mm -hmm. But another astronaut means actually me yeah, <laughs> for you, myself. You have to do it for yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to see that and working with that team, great team. In an alternate timeline, Yui may have been flying during this upcoming six-month window, but on a different spacecraft altogether. Both he and NASA astronaut Mike Fink were previously training as members of the Starliner 1 flight. That's the name for the first long-duration operational mission for Boeing's CST-100 Starliner spacecraft. Yui was never formally announced as a member of the crew, but he was present during the rollout of the Starliner spacecraft ahead of the crew flight test in 2024. He was joined then by CFT Prime crew Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, as well as NASA astronauts Scott Tingle and Mike Fink, who were named by NASA as the commander and pilot of Starliner 1 respectively in 2022. Canadian Space Agency astronaut Joshua Kutrick was also there for rollout after being named to the crew by NASA and CSA in 2023. The four of them were training together at the Johnson Space Center in 2023. Yui says, though, the connection with Fink goes back well beyond their training for the Starliner mission. Very, very strong bond. And actually, sometimes uh, accidentally, sometimes in plan. He was in Japan, actually. He was uh, helping uh, Japanese military to develop our, at the time, our new uh, fighter jet. It names like F-2. And all, I also was pilot of not only F-15, but F-2, which he helped to develop <laughs> our fighter jet. So unintentionally, the bond actually, I mean, connection started very, very long time ago. And now we are actually working together. Uh, we trained together for the Starliner 1. And after that, actually, Crew 11. I think we have very good relationship, uh, not only relationship, but also thinking, uh, thought, very similar. He's very good at like, uh, working for the team taking care of other people. I really wanted to be like that, like Mike's son. So he's a good example for me, just like teacher for me, <laughs> big brother. In that spirit, Yui is hoping that his next trip to space, a decade after the first, can have a positive impact for all those back home. I'd like to send a lot of positive, maybe message to Japanese people or like uh, people all over the world. If we are actually watching news, uh, there are a lot of like uh, sometimes sad news or bad news. But I really want to send some like a positive message from ISS that ISS is kind of uh, humankind symbol for the unity or big achievement. And I hope people hearing my message and thinking that, oh, our future is bright. <laughs> Reporting from the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Will Robinson Smith for Space Flight Now.